So which car manufacturer makes the best motor oil? Well, let's test out the Ford, AC, Delco, Mopar, Honda, and Toyota oils and see if any of them are better than Mobile One. In the first test, we'll see if Ford is first on race day and which oil flows the best when the oil is extremely cold. We'll see which oil offers the best protection against engine wear. We'll compare the oils to see which is best at resisting thermal breakdown and evaporation. I paid an independent oil lab to provide us a detailed report on all six motor oils. I drove a Jeep at the Matt's Off-Road Recovery Games and later in the video, we'll see if this Jeep survived unharmed. Before we jump into the testing, let's send off the oil samples to an oil testing lab. To avoid a mix-up, I'm labeling each of the sample bottles. I always shake oil containers just in case some of the additive package has fallen out of suspension and settled at the bottom of the container. We'll check out the results later in the video. The high temperature viscosity is the number after the dash and indicates the oil flow characteristics in the warmed up engine. I won't test the oils at full operating temperature, but let's see how they perform at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Honda's in lane 1, Toyota lane 2, and Mobile One in lane 3. And Mobile One is first out of the gate, but this is an extremely tight race with Honda and Toyota on Mobile One's heels. And Mobile One has a very small Small lead. And Honda VTEC better kick in soon because the race is almost over. And it's Mobile One for the win, and the Honda and Toyota finish in a two way tie for second place. So Mobile One will advance to the next round of competition. It's Motorcraft or Ford in lane one, AC Delco or Chevrolet lane two, Mopar lane three, and Mobile One lane four. So will Ford be first on race day, or will Mopar have Mopower? power? And Mobile One is once again the fastest out of the gate, but this race is even closer than the last. And the Chevrolet is running at red line, but the Mobile One is just too fast. And it's Mobile One for the win, but AC Delco Chevrolet finish in a close second. Ford crossed the finish line in third, and Mopar fourth. At a price of $13 is this Honda Ultimate Full Synthetic. All the motor oils we'll be testing are SAE 0W20. The Honda motor oil is API SP ILSAC GF6. It claims to have outstanding resistance to viscosity and thermal breakdown. We're going to test that. Distributed by American Honda Motor Company out of Torrance, California. Prices for motor oil do vary a lot, but I paid $14 for this Toyota motor oil. The Toyota is also a full synthetic motor oil. API SP 0W20. The Toyota motor oil is made in USA from domestic and or imported components. And motor oil definitely needs to be able to handle high engine temperature. So let's see how the oils stack up against each other in the first test. I'll first compare the Honda against the Toyota. Each of the pots or test containers weighs a different amount, so I'll measure out precisely 200 grams of oil. Then I'll crank up the heat to around 410 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. The official test for this is the NOAC volatility test. It's an ASTM test which exposes oil to a lot more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. At the end of this test, we'll find out how much evaporation has occurred with each brand. Then we'll be using the cooked oil for additional testing to see which oil is the best. It's been right at two hours. Once the oil has cooled off, I'll weigh each of the containers to see how much evaporative loss has occurred. And the Honda started off at 410.86 grams and it now weighs 403.14, a loss of 7.72 grams. And the Toyota started off at 394.62 grams and it now weighs 387.95, a loss of 6.67 grams. Grams. Let's go ahead and test the lubricity or film strength of the Honda oil against the Toyota next. I'll first add 40 milliliters of oil that's been exposed to heat into the test cups. I'll first coat the test wheel and the test pin in motor oil to avoid damage from a dry start. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine which oil provides the best film strength. The lubricity test will provide us with some great information on how the oil performs. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll definitely provide us with some great information. Between each test, I'll use brake parts cleaner to clean the test equipment and then I'll use sandpaper to resurface the test wheel. There seems to be a little more friction with the Toyota, and the watt meter is showing a little more energy usage compared to the Honda. And the test is finished, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of the test pins under the microscope. I always like to label the test pins to avoid a mix-up. And the Honda has a wear scar of 7.41 millimeters, which is actually pretty good. And the test pin for the Toyota motor oil does have a little larger wear scar than the Honda at 7.6 millimeters. The Honda test pin is on the left and the Toyota is on the right. And this is an easy win for the Honda at around 3% less damage. I paid $18 for a quarter of this AC Delco full synthetic motor oil. It too is API SP. The AC Delco oil also meets Dexos 1 certification. Distributed by General Motors LLC. At a price of around $20 for a quart is this Motocraft full synthetic synthetic motor oil. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find Motocraft API SP motor oil, API SN Plus, and ILSAC GF5. They claim that their full synthetic formulation is blended with performance additives to help reduce engine friction and protect your engine. Helps protect engine against piston damage by reducing oil-derived pre-ignition. It even claims better fuel economy. It's distributed by Ford Motor Company. Let's compare the AC Delco, or we'll call it the Chevrolet, against the Motocraft or the Ford. 
And someone told Cousin Eddie that Chevrolet stands for cracked heads, every valve rattles, and oil leaks every time. And Cousin Eddie wasn't too happy about that since his RV has a Chevrolet 454. I don't know about that, but Ford Motorcraft seems to be handling the heat a little bit better than the AC Delco. And two hours is up and the oils are cooled down. And the AC Delco started off at 404.64 grams, and it now weighs 398.3, a loss of 6.34 grams. So that is better than the Honda and the Toyota. And the Ford Motorcraft started off at 429.8 grams, and it now weighs 423.63 grams, a loss of 6.17, the best yet. So it's Ford over Chevrolet. In order to test Mopar, I'll need to borrow the oil container from AC Delco. So I'll go ahead and transfer the oil into a separate container. Let's see how the AC Delco performs on the lubricity tester. And the AC Delco was off to a great start with the energy use meter showing very little friction on the test pin. And the AC Delco seems to perform very well. And the AC Delco Chevrolet just took the lead from the Honda with the smallest wear scar yet. Honda's on the left and the AC Delco is on the right. Both oils did perform well, but this is a very clear win for the AC Delco Chevrolet. And the Ford Motorcraft is also performing very well in this test with very little noise coming from the tester and the energy use meter is looking very good. And the Ford Motorcraft has outperformed the AC Delco Chevrolet on the evaporative loss test, but does it offer better wear resistance? And the Ford Motorcraft performed very well, but not quite good enough to beat the AC Delco. And it's an easy win for the Chevrolet AC Delco. I paid $15 for this Mopar Max Pro full synthetic motor oil. Just like the previous motor oils, this is API SP and Il GF6A oil made in USA at a price of $12, which is less expensive than all the brand oils. Is this Mobile One Advanced Fuel Economy? Just like the other brands, 0W20. It claims that it protects for 10,000 miles. It's Ilsac GF6A and API SP oil made in USA. So the Ford Motorcraft has a lead for evaporative loss. Let's see if either the Mobile One or the Mopar can move into the lead over the Ford. And it hasn't even been 20 minutes yet, and the Mopar is still looking very fresh, but the Mobile One is becoming very dark quickly. And the two hours is up, and the oil is completely cooled off. And the Mopar started off at 404.62 grams, and it now weighs 398.38, a loss of 6.24 grams. And the Mobile One started off at 418.88 grams, and it now weighs 412.49 grams, a loss of 6.39. So the AC Delco is holding on to a pretty strong lead with the smallest wear scar, but the Mopar and the Mobile One can change that. And the Mopar test is finished. The Mopar performed well, but not quite as well as the Honda or the AC Delco. The test pin for the Honda is on the left, and the Mopar test pin is on the right. And the Honda and AC Delco test pins do have a smaller wear scar. I've tested the Mobile One in the past, and it has been a good performing motor oil. And the Mobile One seems to be performing very close to the same as the Mopar. And the test is finished, so let's see how the Mopar compares to the AC Delco. And the AC Delco is on the left, and the Mobile One test pin is on the right. And it's a very clear win for the AC Delco. When it comes to oils that offer the best wear resistance, the AC Delco came in on top with the smallest wear scar, and the Honda finished in second. Ford Motorcraft finished in third, and the Mobile One finished in fourth. Let's go ahead and see how the oils perform against each other after experiencing exposure to intense heat. The race order from left to right is Honda, Toyota, and Mobile One. And just like their previous race, Mobile One is out of the gate first and the Honda is trying to catch up. And all the oils are very fast and it's Mobile One for the win and Honda in second. This time, the Toyota finished in a very close third. From left to right, it's Ford Motorcraft, AC Delco Chevrolet, Mopar, and Mobile One. This time, all four oils are out of the gate at nearly the same time. However, the Chevrolet is keeping pace with Mobile One this time, and Ford and Mopar are very close behind. And this one is just too close to call a clear winner. So it's a tie for the AC Delco Chevrolet and Mobile One. Motocraft and Mopar tied for third as they cross the finish line at the same time. Let's go ahead and refill the tester with the cooked oil and place the oil in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to see how the oils perform when they're very cold. We definitely want oil that flows well when it's very cold to get those moving parts lubricated sooner. And the oils have been in the freezer for about 10 hours. All the oils do have a 0W rating and should flow at about the same speed. From left to right, it's Honda, Toyota, and Mobile One. And the Toyota's out of the gate first, but it's a very close second for the Honda. And Mobile One is really struggling to keep up. According to the Toyota driver, Honda stands for hang on, not done accelerating. And the Honda needs that VTEC to kick in about right now. And it's Toyota for the win, but Honda is in a close second. And the Mobile One is in a close third. Ford Motorcraft is in lane one, AC Delco Chevrolet lane two, Mopar lane three, and Mobile One lane four. When it's really cold, the Mopar had more power than the competition, and it's the first one out of the gate. And Mobile One is in a close second, just behind the Mopar. And the Ford Motorcraft might not be first on race day, but it's ahead of the Chevrolet AC Delco this time. And Mopar has more power than the competition this time and finishes in first. Mobile One just crossed the finish line in a close second. 
Ford Motorcraft is in third and AC Delco finished in fourth. So when it comes to cold oil performance, Toyota came in on top at 41 seconds. Mopar was almost as fast at 41.5 and Honda 45.6 seconds. To compare the oils, I've consolidated the results onto a single chart. Aluminum, iron, and tin are considered impurities or wear metals. And the Motorcraft has more impurities than the other brands, but the oil still looks very good with only trace levels of aluminum, iron, copper, and tin. Barium, boron, calcium, and magnesium are detergents and dispersants. So the question is, will Mobile One keep your vehicle engine as clean as OEM motor oil. Based purely upon detergent and dispersant content, Motorcraft has the highest level at 2,189 parts per million. However, AC Delco and Honda aren't too far behind the Motorcraft. I'm pretty surprised to see that Mobile One and Toyota have about 500 parts per million or about 25% less detergent and dispersant content. Anti-wear additives are very important for engine life and performance. And all the motor oils do have a very nice looking anti-wear additive package at around 16 to 1700 parts per million except for the Toyota. And the Toyota motor oil does seem a little bit low at less than 1300 parts per million. The TBN or total base number is the ability of the oil to neutralize acids. And all the motor oils seem pretty evenly matched at around 6.5 except for Toyota which is around 5.7. So which oil is the best? Combining my test results with the oil testing lab's results, the Motocraft oil came out on top with an average finish of 2.2. Mopar and AC Delco weren't too far behind with an average finish of 3 and 3.2 respectively. So if you don't include the oil testing lab's results, the order stays the same with Motocraft and Mopar tying for first. On the other hand, if one only looks at the testing lab's results, once again the order stays the same. While all the motor oils are of good quality, I'm pretty surprised that the top four brands outperform Mobile One. All right, for the next three days, we are going to be doing a competition up there. Yeah, every morning, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. A big thank you to everyone who recommended that I participate in the Matt's Off-Road Recovery Games. The games took place at Sand Hollow State Park in Utah. Prior to this event, I've never driven a vehicle designed for rock crawling. I was paired up with Eric from BSF Recovery. A big thank you to Eric, his wife Mara, and his friend Gabe for letting me drive their Jeep. Eric's friend Gabe built this Jeep in only six weeks, and this was the first time that it was put to the test. He did an amazing job of building this Jeep, and it survived the entire rock crawling event without any mechanical issues. It also made very quick work of going over some very difficult obstacles. Having a very capable Jeep really helps, but having an experienced spotter like Eric is even more important. He did such a great job of guiding me through the entire course that the Jeep drove over just about every obstacle on the first attempt. My biggest regret is that I didn't bring Cousin Eddie to the games. One of the most common questions that I get asked is what do I do with all the things that I test? I buy everything that I review and I give most items away. Unfortunately, I just didn't have enough space for Cousin Eddie and everything that I wanted to give away. I gave away well over 100 items and I raffled away 5 additional items. If I'm invited back to the games next year, Cousin Eddie says that he's going to the games and he wants to drive. I'd also like to once again bring a bunch of items that I'll give away. The best part of the entire experience was meeting everyone who watches the reviews. At least 500 people stopped by to say hello and signed a BSF recovery and Project Farm flag. So thanks to everyone who stopped by to say hello and signed a flag. I'll keep the flag inside the shop and up on a wall. The Jeep is a 1988 YJ and it has a stock engine and Holley Sniper fuel injection system. It also has a stock transmission and transfer case and they both perform very well. The Jeep has Adams drive shafts powering one ton axles with three link front suspension and ORI shocks. The axles have been re-geared to 5.38 to 1 axle ratios and the axles are riding on 40 inch tires. In other words, the drive shaft rotates about 5.5 times for every time the wheel rotates once. Additionally, the Jeep is in low range 4 wheel drive giving the Jeep an incredibly ideal gear ratio for high torque and low speeds. The front rear axles have lockers which allows the drivetrain to apply power to all wheels at the same time. Check out the articulation with the suspension. All this articulation really helped the wheels stay on the ground. My daily driver has a limited slip and trying to drive most of these obstacles with the limited slip would have been nearly impossible. Another thing that really helped the Jeep was that the tires were only inflated to around 8 psi which allows the tires to have an incredible amount of grip. The low tire pressure as well as the size of the tires was like driving on rocks that were coated in sandpaper. However, in some areas the rocks were really sandy and tire spin did become a problem. However, a little rolling momentum allowed the tires to get beyond the super slick areas of the rocky terrain and move forward. Some of the rocks were so steep that I wasn't able to see beyond the top of the rocks but it really helped to have Eric pointing me in the right direction. The Jeep does have a very short wheelbase and the back of the Jeep is very light. The wheelbase and lightweight of the back of the Jeep isn't a problem unless trying to drive up a steep incline backwards. The vehicles that did traverse the trail varied substantially with regard to capability. I was fortunate to have a very capable vehicle as did most of the others on the trail. I do think it'd be a lot of fun for the off-road games next year to include 10 to 20 teams using a budget build of around $10,000. The entertainment value of watching a bunch of Frankenstein vehicles would be absolutely awesome.
I think it would also be a lot of fun to space out the vehicles a little bit more instead of being within 50 to 100 feet of each other most of the time. The security team did a great job of keeping everyone safe and this was a well-planned event. Of course, things never go perfect to plan, but if you're interested in off-roading, being adaptable sure seems like a natural fit. With that said, things went very close to plan and this was a very well-organized event. That's awesome. The final obstacle on the trail at Sand Hollow in Utah is called the chute. It's a very steep climb, and once you're committed, there's no point in looking back. Fortunately, the tires did a great job of gripping the rock, and we made it all the way up to shoot the first attempt without any scrapes or dings to the vehicle. Eric and I discussed attempting to shoot driving backwards, but the back of the Jeep is very light. We were concerned that the back of the Jeep might be too light, causing the Jeep to flip end over end, and decided not to try it. Some of the OEM oils performed a lot better than anticipated, and I was really surprised that the Toyota didn't do a lot better. I really enjoyed the off-road games. It was a lot of fun meeting everyone and participating participating in all the events. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.